Guys, if you ever want to learn how you can use Google Sheets to create cron job, this video, I'm going to explain to you how to do that exactly. And believe you me, it is extremely, extremely powerful and useful thing to do. So let's get right to it. Hey guys, welcome to Code with Mark, where I share helpful videos to help you become a professional web developer a lot faster. If you are interested in learning how to become a professional web developer a lot faster and learn technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, MongoDB, MySQL, and others that are going to help you create amazing, awesome web development app, do consider subscribing to the channel. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we have this sheet right here uh this is called single post i just create two tabs single post and multi post and then what we are going to do is we're going to pretend that we have an api that we want a run a cron job on obviously this would something you want to do it on your server so let's say you have a php server or a node.js or any other server that you want to trigger a url and then once it gets to the url it's going to perform in certain kind of actions so to get a dummy <clears throat> url what we're going to do is we're going to go to this uh, url which is called json placeholder dot typey code dot com and then i'm going to go all the way down and i'm going to use the uh, post one right here you could do a single post or you could do multiple posts so let's just go over here and then clear this up and then also have a multiple one in here i'll clear this out as well so to show you how it actually does work so we go over here first and we're going to go to extension if you haven't watched any of my previous google sheet tutorial i will leave a link in the description for you go check them out you're going to be surprised what you can actually do with the google sheet it may seem very simple at the core level but once you deep dive into it you're like wow this thing truly rocks and also i'm going to have another uh, uh video coming up if you haven't subscribed to the channel subscribe to it in which i will show you how you can use google sheets to create an amazing powerful web application so stay tuned to that and one of the powerful uh, web application will be how to set up a sign up newsletter in which google sheet will send an email to whoever signs up for your newsletter and then that particular person can click on the link to sign up and get the download so on and so forth so mm, have a look out for that so that's coming soon so all right let's get right to it or i just want to give you a quick reminder that i have this special gift that's going to help you that you can get it at this url don't forget to get it and don't worry i'm going to leave a link in the description for you to make it easier all right now back to your video so we're going to go to extension app scripts and then from here we have two functions uh, actually let's just go over here for this first time you're tuning in you we have two files one is called the cron job functions another one is called the sheet function and the sheet function which is from here if you watch any of my previous google sheet tutorial that has to do with the app script or web development for the app script you will know exactly what i'm doing here if you haven't let me just give you a quick overview so this is a your something closest thing i can describe to it is called your uh if you for example if you have mysql database you want to use php to connect to it this is going to allow you to connect to your sheet and then whatever sheet name you want to pull up you just literally put it in here it's going to connect to it and that's that and so these two function if you want you could just literally copy everything in here and put it in here and then the main meats and potatoes is going to happen here so first what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first function which is called cron job api single post and this is the url that i am calling and once i go to the url it's going to give me this json array so just to give you an idea i'll copy this uh 
and then I'm going to paste it in here. And this is exactly what I get. No matter how many times I refresh it, I will get the same exact thing. So that is that. So this is the line of code that actually sends the AJAX request, if you want to call it, or API call to the URL, which will be right over here. And then once it gets it, it's going to turn it into, well, we're not going to do it here. We're going to do it in the next one. And I'll just delete this out as well. And then one more thing, what I want to do is this. I'll copy, where is it? This right here. So I'll just copy it here. Copy this into a date. So basically what I did was I had a moment JS in here, but I took it out because I figured it would be just easier. I don't need the whole library just to get the date and time in there. So there's a function here, get D, DTTM, which is for me, when I use this, it's called date and time. And this function is right here. You can utilize it into your own JavaScript project if you like. And then basically what that does is because it will give you the current date and time at the moment that it's called and that is that and then in here we're going to connect to a sheet that's called single post which is this one right here and then we're just going to go down we'll take this out and then we're going to create an array multi-dimensional array so we have array with an array then we have a value called the date the URL that we're calling, which is this, and the response the URL will give us, which will be this right here. And then we're gonna get the next available row number. So if you watch any of my previous video, this will give me the last populated row, which means right now it's gonna go through column A and say, hey, which column A has the information? and then give me the row number for that. And then what I'm doing is I'm just getting add one to it. And this line of code is going to add your uh, new call, a row to that thing here. So which will be from here, here, and here. So let's see how it actually works when we perform it. So in order for you to run any of the function, what you do is from the drop down box here, I'm gonna click on single post one and then click on run. And then it's gonna run it, execute it, and then it tells me that I cannot find it because I have a record date and time in here. I'll copy this, paste it in here, save it, and I'll rerun it. And now it will run. If I go back my sheet here, here it is. So if I rerun it again, it's gonna be the same exact thing in next row, next row, next row, next row. So this is something that you may wanna look at if you just have a one a URL in which it just give you a true or false depending on your web application, what is the response that's gonna come back. So let's say if you have a URL or API call in which you send this information out to or call it, and it will give you back a multiple JSON array objects and you wanna parse through those things. So how do you go about doing that? So this is exactly what we are gonna do. So the next URL is this right here. So let's take a look at it in the browser, what it will give us. So this gives us a list of, I think it's 10. Yep, 10 JSON objects right over here that we can do. And so in order for us to do that same exact concept, but this time around, we are going to convert the response, whichever one that it gives you into a JSON array object. And then obviously you could use this line of code to convert it your uh, into a JavaScript JSON object. And if you don't know a lot about JavaScript and you're like, this is pretty cool and I really want to learn how to use JavaScript, I do have a course that I will leave a link in the description for you in which you can take that course and it will help you 
better understand or more importantly faster understand how to use javascript and also has a whole bunch of amazing information on using a jquery and all if you know me me well you know i love using some jquery all right so let's move on so in here i'm connecting to the multi post which would be this right here and this line of code basically what it does what i did was i am getting the last popular row with this function and then i'm saying from a2 to f whatever the last popular row is delete all this information but if this is something that you are using for your own live version you may want to do that if you just care about the day-to-day -day thing or if you want to append it you could just literally just take this comment that I double slash save it and that's that but for the sake of this particular tutorial i'm going to leave it alone and then let's move on and then once i get this json object into a json object array by converting it into it then all i'm doing is going using a regular vanilla javascript for each and then i'm looping right through it and then every time i loop through it i am only going to grab a record date and time which would be this which i created within the function and then i'm grabbing the url which is this and then the id the name email and then the whole response to it so let's me go over to the url so in this case let's go all the way up so i'm grabbing the id the name and the email and obviously has other other information that i may potentially could grab if i wanted to but i think if you grab one of these and you could just go right through it if for your own you know uh url api call that you're calling it so that is that so let's take a look at it how does it actually work so i'm going to click on uh switch it over to the multi posts click on run and it's going to go loop through it and then tells me can i find the range and why is that the case let's take a look i'm glad it happened because now you know how to troubleshoot it so let's take a look at this so let me just for now comment this out save it and let read run it sometime it i don't know why it works that way but it does so let's go over here line number 52 which is this and let me go over here go over here again so let's just do this it's gonna add in here call it record date time and then url and then id name email message and the reason why i am going through this troubleshooting is because when you are creating it there's a possibility you will come across this but after you watch me like this is exactly what i need to do to edit it so so let's go over here let's save it again and rerun it And it looks like it's running, 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 and then voila, here it is. So right now I have 12 rows because the first two were added before. So if I want now, I can literally go back to here and then take this out. And then what it's gonna do is gonna delete it and rerun it. And now I should only have 10 row once it's done. So if I go back here, so starting from row number two, go all the way down, we have 10 records. So <clears throat> that right there is how you do it manually. Obviously, that's not the main point of this whole video is, right? So of course, what you want to do is you want to automatically do this thing on a regular basis. So how do you do that? Once you're on this app script, there is click on this little trigger. If you hover over your, uh, what you call looks like a, uh time watch at the time of the recording that's what it is but if you're watching it later on in the future it might be in a different place but let's look for something that's called triggers and then from here you can create a new trigger by clicking on this new trigger 
and then from there you could tell which function you want it to run so let's just say uh, i just want to run the first one and then you could say leave the this part alone and then event is going to be the time driven you could do other things, which means something added to the sheet. You could do that, or if you add it to the calendar, so on and so forth. But we are not going to go into that. So time driven, and then you could tell it how often do you want to run it. Every minute, you could do every minute or specific date and time, every hour, every day, week, month, and so on and so forth. So if you want to do it, let's just say every day, <clears throat> and then it's going to say what time of the day do you want it to run so you can see how powerful this thing is and you have a complete control over this thing so let's just say between i'm just gonna say 89 and then also you have the option if it fails you can get notified daily hourly weekly so on and so forth so if you want another one call it notify me immediately so on and so forth so that is that so if i save it so every day now it's gonna run once it, it runs it it's gonna save this information in here and as you can see it literally just ran it right over here this one got ran so if i take this out delete it and then if you want you can actually open this up and look at the details of it and it will tell you how many times it has been executed so on and so forth so if you go back to your editor you will see this and then that's that so this is how you create your cron job with google sheet for free it is extremely easy to do as i showed you and it works very effectively and you could do a lot of, a lot more than what I have shown you. So if you truly watch this video and you find it very helpful, do consider subscribing to the channel and leave a comment if you feel like, hey, this is pretty cool. I wish you have added this. Maybe in the future, I will add it in the my future video. So as I always said, until next time, guys, happy coding.